And of course, all we're really trying to do is to recreate how the valley looked 150 years ago when it was the centre of a very large mining industry. Uh, and so when we speak about the Heritage Trail, for us, that's everything uh, r really from the Snaefell mines almost up to the peak of Snaefell and then down through the village of Agnish, uh, Lazy, it, Lady Isabella, as we all know, down through the village of Laxey and then on down Glen Road to the beach. So the Heritage Trail runs all the way, as we say, from the sea to the summit. You've brought some posters in today, which um, people will be able to look at on the, the MR Vision. But just tell us about some of the, the characters that are featured. OK. Well, if I start on, on the poster on my right, Little Tommy Kinraid, that was based on my great-grandfather, whose name was Little Tommy Kinraid. And he went down the mines at a very early age. Um, and um, that's part of our history. Um, another one was um, entirely fictitious, a lady called Annie Quayle, who was uh, one of the few women working on the washing floors. Her job was to barrow the ore round about the, the washing floors, and also I believe the few women who worked on the washing floors had to go into the offices as well and did cleaning jobs there. And the concept that we're working on is that whereas a heritage trail is usually considered to be uh, a string of attractions or buildings, uh, we decided that we'd like to try for the more human aspect of it all. And we've got about 17 or 18 characters from the 1860s. Uh, and for each of those characters, we have a story, uh, where they lived, what they did, and how they lived their life. So we've made a heritage trail of the characters, and we refer to that as the Laxey Tales. And at the Crafty Weaver room in the Laxey Woolen Mills, uh, we've got an exhibition for this year. We've themed it as the Mine Captain's Office. Uh, and in there, you can go and meet all of the characters and then look at where they live on the map. And then if you'd like to do it, you can walk around and find them all. Uh, and as uh, Tina says, our little poster boy is little Tommy. It's fictitious, the way we tell the story. He was a wagon lad working on the wagons in the Adit uh, tramway before there was a steam engine. So he was doing this with horse-drawn trams. Uh, and then we have his uh, auntie, Annie Quayle, who had to work very hard and got paid very little. His big uncle, who was the very successful miner, Thomas Scarf. And then we go up from the more fictitious characters into uh, the mine captain, Richard Rowe, the en engineering superintendent, Robert Casement, and of course, uh, Chairman Dumball, the uh, rather ruthless banker that made it all so profitable. So we've got the whole story and we wrap it all into the Laxey Tales. So why did you decide to put this trail together? What was the, the inspiration? Well, the inspiration is actually Tina's mother, um, Auntie Margaret. Um, Auntie Margaret sadly towards the end of her life got dementia and lived her life in Laxey. Um, she always wanted to come back but unfortunately didn't and this is Richard, Tina and, and myself because I'm a cousin of Tina. Um, this is our um, tribute to Auntie Margaret um, but we mentioned Richard Rowe and so we've got a fantastic video um, starring one of the island's local actors um, Chris, T Chris Kane and it's going to be a short greeting video at Christchurch um, and We'll also sort of learn more about him um, at the, the Tales from the Mill. Um, we're having a desk there that actually that actually used to belong to E.C. Neal, who was the gentleman who saved Laxey Will in the 1940s, and he happens to be my grandfather-in-law. Um, but let's actually go back to the Christchurch, and Vicar Joe can tell you a little bit more about that. Yes, we, we are struggling in the church to make ends meet and actually pay our parish share last year and it was very much on the cards that the parish would have to be amalgamated and the role of the vicar in the parish probably would have been lost. Um, Richard came through the door on the day that that was being talked about and he said, I'm Richard Hubbard and I thought, are you? Who are you? And uh, from there the dream has become a reality and we have, we have got every piece of paper in, in place at four o'clock on Friday we had the planning permission came through and uh, four o'clock yesterday we had the church faculties come through so we're actually able to use Christchurch Laxey as the welcome centre. So the 55,000 people who come through Laxey, we want them to come to Laxey and we'd like them to come through the church building. 
The building has been left as the epitome of a parish church with these pews still in place and it will be able to seat 70 people to watch the video which will welcome people and tell them the story of what Zaxi used to be like and obviously we are hoping that there will be donations, there's a contactless uh, donation box there. We hope sufficient donations to keep the church alive. So it was built by the miners for the miners in 1856 and um, it's been there ever since. Um, we really were struggling these last few years. I've only been there eight years but it's been an absolute privilege to be the steward of that place at this time. And we're just praying that we can keep it open by enough people coming, wanting to look at the past to protect the present and make the future happen. Now, you all have various ties to Laxey. What makes Laxey so special as a village? Oh, it's just the most amazing place. I mean, everybody um, is there for everybody else. I mean, we're a very close-knit community. I'm involved in with the Working Man's Institute, um, Laxey Methodist Church, um, my children have gone through Laxey School. They've been involved in all the various sort of guides, cubs, brownies, ballet classes there. So the children from a very early age get are, are, are very close-knit and get to know each other. And, of course, then as parents you do, and then they grow, and, you know, you, you, you just get involved in more and more community activities. It's a very community-based village, really. It's a, just a, a, it's a lovely place to live in. And how do you see this trail benefiting Laxey? Well, OK, so let, let's, let's just take a little step back. So um, many people know Andrew Scarf. Uh, he's a, an amazing uh, man, an, an engineer, but really a historian. And he spent a lot of time uh, looking at the history of mining in the Laxey Valley. And he's written an incredible book uh, published in 2004. And really, Andrew is the man that has expressed the dream and possibility with most clarity and what he says is that in Laxey Valley there are something like 60 heritage buildings uh, and most of them are still standing and if ever anywhere in the world you could recreate an entire industrial archaeology and bring it back to life it is the Laxey Valley. Uh, and you may know that uh, back in 2010 Laxey Valley was put forward uh, as a potential candidate on the UK shortlist to be nominated as a World Heritage Site, uh, and it wasn't really progressed. But, you know, we've discussed this with Edmund Southworth, and it's obviously got the potential to do it. So in terms of looking ahead, the, the real vision here is if we could recreate the interest sufficiently in the entirety of the valley to get it back as a nomination for a potential World Heritage Site. We've already partnered with the Biosphere team, and so quite in addition to everything to do with its uh, heritage interest, you'll know it's the most beautiful valley. And so when you put the two things together, the sort of the stunning beauty all the way from the peak of Snaefell down to the beach, and its huge interest going back to those days when there were a thousand people working there, and it was the largest and most profitable uh, zinc mine in the whole of the British Isles and briefly it was the largest zinc mine in the world so it's got an incredible past but it's also a just beautiful place so the way we think of this is our aim is on behalf of the community at large to find a way to increase awareness of it and you know if we can get 20% more visitors through the valley and they're all there for an enjoyable day out and it's suitable for the all mobility ranges then I think we can put Laxey Valley firmly back on the map. So that's uh, what we're trying to do. Now the launch event for this takes place on Saturday. Can you just recap the details? OK, so Saturday is actually, um, we chose that date because it's also going to be Laxey Fair. So the Valley Gardens, which are the washing floors, will be thronged with the children from Laxey School, their mums, their dads, all the visitors. Um, so it's just going to be a... a this, there's a, a wonderful buzz about the place um, and so at 12 o'clock we're having our launch um, and we're very fortunate that our patron Claire Christian is going to come along and say a couple of words. Um, we are going to, um, the film will, be, will have its inaugural show um, and then from there people can pick up these fantastic leaflets which is the Visit Laxey Valley, okay? And then on the inside there are 10 things the top 10 things to people 
good people to see and do. And I mean, talking about the community, we've had fantastic sponsorship from um, businesses all around Laxey who want to help us. Um, and we should also actually pay tribute to um, Manx National Heritage and Culture Vannin and the Old Man Arts Council who have also been our sponsors. Um, so yeah, at 12 o'clock we'll, ha- we'll have the launch and then people um, can take our leaflets and then they can um, go from here to the Rose Garden shelter where there'll be more maps and displays down to the Valley Gardens, watch the opening of the Laxey Fair and then, ma- then make their way al- along to the uh, Tales from the Mill, which is the room above the Woolen Mills um, and hopefully spending a little bit of time um, you know, um, having a cup of tea and buying a piece of cake along the way.